Hello and good day, everybody. This is Kyla, and today on The State of Health, we're looking at transfusion strategies in patients with myocardial infarction and anemia. Before we get started, if you have been finding value in our State of Health videos, consider joining the MedSchool member community today. As a member, you'll get early exclusive access to more semi-monthly State of Health videos, more case report posts, and priority replies to your comments. To join, simply click the Join button below. You can also sign up by clicking the Join button on our channel page. Welcome back to the State of Health. To kick things off, let's delve into some background on our topic. Anemia often accompanies acute myocardial infarction, but the best strategy for red cell transfusion in these patients remains uncertain due to inconsistent results from limited studies. While blood transfusion may reduce ischemic injury by improving oxygen delivery and lessen the risk of reinfarction or death, there are also potential adverse effects like fluid overload, infection, thrombosis, and inflammation. The Myocardial Ischemia and Transfusion Trial, MINT for short, was conducted with the primary objective to determine if the risk of death or myocardial infarction within a 30-day span differed between a restrictive transfusion strategy and a liberal transfusion strategy in patients with acute myocardial infarction and anemia. This trial involved patients with myocardial infarction and a hemoglobin level of less than 10 grams per deciliter. They were randomly assigned to either a restrictive transfusion strategy with a hemoglobin cutoff for transfusion of 7 or 8 grams per deciliter, or a liberal transfusion strategy with a hemoglobin cutoff of less than 10 grams per deciliter. The primary outcome was a combination of myocardial infarction or death at 30 days. The results of the study showed that a total of 3,504 patients were included in the primary analysis. The average number of red cell units transfused was 0.7 in the restrictive strategy group and 2.5 in the liberal strategy group. The mean hemoglobin level was 1.3 to 1.6 grams per deciliter, lower in the restrictive strategy group than in the liberal strategy group on days 1 to 3 after randomization. Now, when examining the primary outcome, that is myocardial infarction or death at 30 days, it occurred in 16.9% of patients in the restrictive strategy group and in 14.5% of patients in the liberal strategy group. Death occurred in 9.9% of the patients with the restrictive strategy and in 8.3% of the patients with the liberal strategy. Meanwhile, myocardial infarction occurred in 8.5% and 7.2% of the patients, respectively. So what's the bottom line here? The MINT trial has demonstrated that for patients with acute myocardial infarction and anemia, a liberal transfusion strategy did not significantly reduce the risk of recurrent myocardial infarction or death within a 30-day span. However, it did hint at some potential advantages. For instance, the liberal strategy was favored in various measures, including the composite of death, myocardial infarction, ischemia-driven unscheduled coronary revascularization, or readmission to the hospital for an ischemic cardiac condition. The important takeaway here is that even though the trial did not attain its pre-specified level of statistical significance, it wasn't due to poor implementation of the transfusion strategy. In fact, the trial noted a significant difference in blood use and hemoglobin levels between the two strategies. It's worth mentioning that the trial was designed to detect a 20% relative between group difference, and the observed effect was a relative difference of approximately 15%. This smaller than expected difference might be attributed to the wide range of patients enrolled in the trial, introducing more variety in treatment effects than initially anticipated. It's also crucial to acknowledge the strength of this trial. Its design was pragmatic, and with minimal exclusions, it successfully enrolled a diverse group of older patients with a variety of diagnoses and coexisting illnesses. The trial's transfusion protocols were straightforward and closely mirrored clinical practice in various settings. The results of this trial are highly relevant to clinical practice and offer valuable insight into the decision-making process around blood transfusions for patients with acute myocardial infarction and anemia. However, the liberal transfusion strategy did not significantly reduce the risk of recurrent myocardial infarction or death at 30 days. This observation suggests some benefit of a liberal strategy over a restrictive one. Yet, to conclusively prove this, further studies are required. The study's findings are vital because they contribute to the ongoing conversation on optimal transfusion strategies for patients with acute myocardial infarction and anemia. They also highlight the need for further research to confirm the potential benefits of the liberal transfusion strategy. This could then have significant implications for clinical practice guidelines and patient outcomes in this area of healthcare. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's State of Health. If you enjoyed this, please do me such a huge favor. Click those like and subscribe buttons, and if you're listening as a podcast, go consider leaving a review or a five-star rating. 
Don't forget to check out stateofhealth.care for more relevant medical news and content. Until next time, keep your curiosity peaked and your stethoscope close.